Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to trigger the Levolution events in all 10 maps in Battlefield 4. Now if you don't want these events to be spoiled for you, I suggest you stop watching this video now. The first map we're going to look at is Rogue Transmission, which features a giant radio telescope which can be brought down. To bring it down you have to destroy 10 support cables. Each side has a spawn point that is located close to 5 of the support cables. This shot here shows you what it looks like once five of those support cables are destroyed. On this side, we only have one support cable left. To destroy it, you can use any form of explosives, tank rounds, RPGs, whatever you want, it will take it down. I'm gonna detonate it here with some C4. The central capture point on this map is pretty much obliterated once this radio telescope comes down. It doesn't change up the flow of battle too much, but it certainly does look cool. Next up we have Zavod 311, which features a large smokestack next to an industrial building which can be brought down. The way you do this is you go into the industrial building, you locate the large warhead and the laptop, and you can activate the timer on the laptop, which has a three minute countdown, and once that reaches zero, it will detonate the warhead, which in turn brings down the smokestack. Once the smokestack is down, it adds some extra infantry pathways, and it also prevents heavy vehicles from moving through the center of the map. Next up we have Langkang Dam, which offers a dam that you can destroy simply by shooting lots of explosive devices at it. Missiles from helicopters, missiles from LAVs, rocket launchers, whatever you got that explodes will do damage to this dam. It takes a while to bring it down, but once it comes down, it's pretty impressive. In addition to blocking off one of the roadways, stray boulders come flying out of the levolution process and if you're standing in the wrong spot at the wrong time, you will get completely crushed by one of these stray boulders. Next up we have Flood Zone, which features a levee that is basically on the verge of bursting and all it needs is a little extra explosive ordnance to help it do so. C4, RPGs, rockets from LAVs, whatever you got that explodes will destroy this dam. As the water rises, you have a little bit of time to try and take some cover in a nearby building and get up to higher grounds. It's very hard to defend yourself while you're swimming as an infantry. Flood Zone, more than any other map in Battlefield 4, requires you to learn the map before the Levolution process and after the Levolution process, as your means of travel and getting around are going to change significantly. Next up we have Paracel Storm, which features a large destroyer that can become dislodged during the storm that picks up later in the map. Now as the match progresses, the weather changes and it starts to look a little bit like this. Once the windmill is in this state, on fire and spinning quickly, you can damage the central point by shooting it again with any sort of high damaging rounds, and it will eventually dislodge the destroyer, sending it onto C point.
Not only does the destroyer bring down the building on C point, but whatever team controls C gets access to the automatic anti-aircraft gun on C, which is frankly in the center of the map. So this is a very good asset to have, and it should help you keep the skies clear as long as you maintain control over this point. Moving on, we have Golmud Railway, which is one of the more vehicle intensive maps. And to give the infantry a little bit of a way to fight back, there are tons of IEDs placed around this map as Levolution events. They make craters, they blow up crazy big in the middle of a field, they can be detonated with any sort of explosive device. Here I'm going to shoot one with a rocket launcher, as you can see it just absolutely obliterates anything next to the road. You can even throw a grenade onto them and they will just wreck any sort of armor nearby. You want to make sure you're standing a good distance away from them. This is what they look like, a few shells strapped together and there's generally some wires coming off of them. If you follow these wires, it will lead you to a detonation box. This is a great alternative if you don't have any sort of explosive device or if you want to say hide among a group of trees and wait for a tank to drive by. These IEDs are located everywhere, so I recommend just keeping your eyes out for them when you're running around. There's a whole bunch of them on this map. Next we have Operation Locker, which features a central guard tower, which is an excellent defensive point for holding the center of the map. Now if you want to take down this guard tower, say an enemy team's holding it, you can simply strap explosives to it, hit it with grenade launchers, hit it with rocket launchers, again any sort of explosive device against this guard tower will eventually bring it down. Once the tower comes down, it becomes a little bit easier to access the central area of the map. In addition to that, you get an extra pathway to move from the lower level of the map to the upper level of the map. If you still haven't figured out how to take down that central skyscraper in Siege of Shanghai, this is how you do it. It's relatively easy. Start out at the top of the structure, come down to the base. The four posts on the water side of the base have some cracks in them. You can destroy these posts with any sort of explosive device or high powered round. Simply five tank shells per each post will take it out. It's pretty easy to bring it down. Part of the reason why I think you see this thing come down so quickly in the start of each round. The new central area of the map is now quite smoky so it's hard for air vehicles to deal with infantry threats and there's also plenty of hiding spots. In addition to that, an attack boat appears to patrol the waters. Moving on to a more tropical setting, we have Hainan Resort which features a large resort in the center of the map. Both wings of this hotel can be taken out individually. The way you do this is you destroy the two levels of support structures on either side of the hotel using any sort of explosive rounds. I'm doing it with the 25mm cannon on the Little Bird. Repeat this process on the second side and it will prevent infantry from being able to walk to the very top part of the roof using the elevators. It also creates a lot of new pathways in and around the hotel. Lastly we have Dawnbreaker which features a neon lit city that also contains a large boulevard. This boulevard can be completely destroyed including the central bridge. At either end of the boulevard you will find some grates that have been removed from a small hole. This hole will have some stairs leading down to a gas pipe. Activating the control panel on the gas pipe will turn one of the lights red. If you go to the other side and turn both lights red, then the pipeline will go critical. You can prevent this process by turning off one of the lights so the enemy team can potentially prevent you from setting the boulevard to go critical.
be wary not to take cover in buses while this explosion process is going off because it will flip them over. So now that you guys know how to trigger the Levolution events, I recommend you go and try them out. Not only do they look amazing, but you can actually use them quite tactically to gain an advantage over your enemies. As always, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off. Thank you.